Hey there, I've got a um, mechanics problem for you. It's number 87 off of the 1992 Practice Physics GRE. And uh, this is one of my least favorite mechanics problems. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you why. I'm starting to dislike this problem. Uh, number 87. A particle of mass M moves in a circular orbit of radius R around a fixed point under the influence of an attractive force, F equals K over R cubed, where K is a constant. If the potential energy of the particle is zero at an infinite distance from the force center, the total energy of the particle in the circular orbit is. And then glance at those answers. The only one that jumps out as being different is the zero. And then we have just factors of a, a negative and one half over the other answers. And, and when you see something like that, when you see answers that are very similar like that, tread very carefully because this is a problem that's designed with those sucker answers right in there when you just have a factor of a negative one or, or a half or something in there like that. You know that those answers are, are designed to trip you up. And so easily you can do a computation and you can arrive at what you feel like is the right answer but if you did something fundamentally wrong you're gonna pick the wrong answer because it's sitting right there in front of you you just you just did the problem wrong if you don't have your your concepts down and that's why I don't like this problem so much about an hour or so ago when I plucked this out from the uh, the stack I went through and do to do did my problem and said okay I think I got an answer here Checked, checked the answers and I had picked the wrong one. I went back and I, I saw what I did immediately um, and I felt really stupid. But uh, I would say this is a challenging mechanics problem. It's not a super hard problem, but for a physics GRE problem, when you are supposed to go from reading the problem to circling an answer in less than three minutes, that's tricky. That's tricky. So. Uh, I would say this is a, a fairly tricky mechanics problem for the physics GRE. So let's go ahead and uh, my solution, I don't make any, any uh, I don't pretend at all that this is the most elegant solution at all. Uh, it'll get you there. It's very simplistic the way that I do this. Uh, me personally, I'm going to review these types of problems because uh, they are you want to be able to do them fast. Let me put it that way. Fundamentally, I understand what's going on here, but I need more review and practice on doing this types of problems, so I don't waste a lot of time on something like this. Or more importantly, not so much, I mean, wasting time. If you spent 10 minutes on the physics GRE doing this problem, yes, you're not going to have time to complete all the problems on the exam, but what would be worse is if you wasted 10 minutes and you picked a wrong answer and costed you some points there. So. Anyways, let's go into the solution here. Uh, you can always invoke conservation of energy. And this is one of the first things that popped into my head uh, doing this. And so I'm calling the kinetic energy T and the potential energy U. And in the initial situation, uh, it has two terms. And in the final situation, it has those two terms. And so this is one of the first things that, that popped into my head. And they give us, as a given in the problem, they give us this as zero. So that's great. Uh, our answer that we're looking for is these two terms summed together because that's the total energy, the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. Do we know what this is? Do they tell us? Do we know or care what this is, I guess should be the question. They don't tell us. This is a question mark and it, you can't assume that the initial kinetic energy is zero. They don't say the, the, the particle is at rest. They don't say that it has or does not have any velocity relative to this uh, force center, your, your uh, origin. So you can't really assume anything about that. Fortunately, you don't need that. You can compute it if you wanted to, but uh, you can also compute these two quantities and that allows you to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, let me kind of uh, start down here, I guess. So the kinetic energy, in a simplistic way of looking at it, is just one half mv squared. Can I compute one half mv squared in this situation? I can do it because the particle is moving in a circle. 
And so we can go back to our old equation for uh, centripetal acceleration when something is has a force pulling it in a circular orbit, if you will. Uh, it doesn't have to be what you would classically think of an orbit, but uh, in a circle, that, that force has to be V squared over R, right? And then if we multiply the mass, we get a force. So this is equal to our force, and we know that force because they give it to us, K over R cubed. So if I manipulate that a little bit, I can get one half mv squared. If I multiply this and this by an r, and this and this by a one half, you can see it pops out there. I get one half mv squared, and I multiply it by r, so that goes away, and that equals one half k over r squared, because I have that r cancel out there. Okay, so that is this term there. It's k, I'm going to write a little bit differently, k over 2 r squared. So I'm halfway there, halfway home. This, the, the, the tricky bit, as it turns out, is getting the potential energy. Uh, I don't like this part of the problem, and I, like I said, I need to practice, so I'm going to walk you through this. Don't let me lead you astray. If this, uh, if, if this problem you know how to do this problem better than I do, then stick with your method. Don't, don't assume that I'm doing anything in a better way, uh, more methodical than, than you would be doing it. But this is the way that I see it. If, you, if you're totally lost, then hopefully this might help you. So to get the potential energy, that is equal to the work done on the particle as we move it from infinity to its final position which is going to be R, okay? So how do we compute a work done by a force? Well, it's a very basic, basic idea in physics. It's just the force dot the distance, the integral of that. So force dot dr. We're, we're integrating the force over that, that distance that we're moving the particle. Okay, so in this case, we're going from infinity to R. Now this is where you have to be careful. And uh, I admit, this is, this is where I goofed it up. I, I messed up my signs here and I wasn't being careful. And uh, in my defense, there's about three negative signs that, that pop out here as you do this problem and it's like, you have to be very careful with your signs. I, I don't have any great advice on how to do it, so uh, if you've got great advice, post a comment or a video uh, response or something. There are certainly better ways to do this than the way I'm gonna lay it out here. And if you're very, if you're just coming out of your mechanics class and this is all gelled in your head, then, then good. Um, I'm jealous. So, <laughs> I need to review this, as I've said. Uh, if we look at the particle, okay, we've got, it's going, here's our force center or the origin, and then we've got our R vector that's going out to where the particle is at, and then dot, 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 dot. Along that, this is where we're bringing the particle from, and this is where we're bringing the particle to. And this is another place that's easy to screw up this problem. Uh, because you're moving it to a distance little r, and then I'm using r for my vec my my unit vector here. I should have chose a different one, but I'm I'm sloppy like that. Um, anyways, so what we're doing is we're bringing this particle from here to here, and we want to figure out how much uh, work we have to do to do that. So this is the integral that we do. We know uh, what the force is. The tricky bit about this is what is the dot? And, and if I look at my particle here, they tell us that the force is attractive. So the force is going to be in this direction. Which way is dr going to be? You have to realize dr is always going to be in the same direction as r. Okay, so dr is actually going this way. 
And so I need to get rid of this dot product. I need to get rid of the dot there. What's the, if, if F is going in this way and R is going in that way, what's the angle between those? It's uh, pi or 180 degrees. So the cosine of that is going to be a negative one. And that's where I get one negative sign popping out. And so, and, and if you think this straight from the beginning, if you realize that's what's going on and you know that negative sign is there, good on you. Um, like I said, when I review this, I'll, I'll be at that point. But uh, that's where that negative sign comes from, for those of you that might not have seen that. So I'm gonna write in the force, it's negative K over R cubed. And I need to integrate that infinity to R dr. So all I've done is I've moved the, the dot product out of there, right? And then I'll actually do the integration, which, you know, <laughs> when you're racing through the physics GRE, that's <laughs> not even necessarily an easy thing to do when you're trying to do this in under three minutes to do an integration. So, uh, but you're going to get a negative coming out of that as well. So that this first negative is there, but you get a negative K over two R squared, right? So you get another negative sign popping out there. And we're going to evaluate that between infinity and our distance R. All right, so then uh, we plug in the infinity, we get a zero, zero, minus, and we go another negative sign, that's the third one. Uh, and then these two are gonna cancel so we get minus k over 2 r squared. And I realize this is sloppy as hell to say r equals r and plug in the r and whatever. I should have changed the variables there. Um, so use good notation, unlike what I'm doing here, um, by all means. But, but that's going to give us our term, negative k over 2 r squared. So we get a negative out of that. And uh, hopefully you're comfortable with that as the potential energy because whenever you have a, uh, a zero at potential energy that's kind of the standard or the, the way that physicists do it is we get a negative potential energy when we bring that object in when we're talking about an attractive force anyways like gravity um, and it's a negative potential energy so you get minus k over 2 r squared k over 2 r squared minus k over 2 r squared is zero So we've got an answer there, uh, and it turns out the correct answer is C, zero. And so don't, don't overthink this. Don't think, because, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you're watching this and, and I'm completely wrong, and all of this you can really say is frivolous, you can just look at that answer and say, oh, of course, the, uh, the energy is zero initially and the energy is zero finally. Um, if you can walk me through that and if you can post that in a, in a comment or a video uh, a video reply then by all means but uh, as it turns out this has to be zero as well but that is not explicitly stated in the problem and I don't think you can assume that I've looked at some of the the posted solutions and they act like oh it's, it's zero of course it's zero um, but I, I don't see that you can just look at this problem and know that and that's why it's a tricky problem you have to take these steps to actually get there as far as I can tell um, like I said correct me if I'm wrong but that's how I get there after after looking at the answer and uh, working my way through it and it's important to do stuff like this as you're prepping for the the physics GRE don't just look at the answer and say oh okay of course I, I got it or I missed it or whatever but but go through and and review as you go um, review as you work the problems. So that's my answer. Uh, C, the, the 1992 exam, number 87. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.